Hi guys, Constance here from Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So last week I mentioned that I was going to do a video about companion planting and explaining what that is. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So if you've never heard the term companion planting, companion planting is exactly what it sounds like. When you have one plant that does well with another plant of a different type, and they have a mutual beneficial relationship with one another. Now, you've probably heard that it's great to plant basil with tomatoes, and that's true, because basil and tomatoes are companion plants. They do excellent together. Now, sometimes you have plants that don't do well together, and you shouldn't plant them right by each other. Well, let me back up. About two years ago, I took a class all about companion planting, where I learned a great deal about it. I also learned about um, a couple of other things that I'll get to in just a minute that aren't exactly companion planting per se, but are also beneficial to a gardener and homesteader. Um, when I took that class, I took notes like crazy. Um, I wrote down tons of information and I have been working on putting all of that together into a reasonable resource that I can share with others because, you know, I have chicken scratch for handwriting and while I can understand it, um, I don't think a photocopy of my notes would be very helpful to anybody else. So as I was saying, you have the basil and tomato uh, companion that many people have heard of because basil, what it does is because it's a very fragrant plant, it kind of camouflages the fragrance of the tomatoes and essentially hides the tomatoes from some of the pests that are out there. So that's one of the reasons people will plant basil all throughout their tomatoes. And just like you have plants that do very well together, sometimes there's plants that don't do well together. And so that is one of the things that I learned in that class was about certain plants that you should not put anywhere near each other because for whatever reason their relationship is not a good one and now with some of these things there is serious scientific evidence scientists have been able to study this and figure out what it is exactly that these plants do for one another but in some situations they still have no idea they know that these certain things do really well together, but they just haven't quite figured out why. So I think this is all really good information. Now, I don't see this as a hard and fast rule. I mean, of course, if you've got certain things that absolutely should not be planted by one another, then that's good information to have. And if you, there are things that do really well together, that's really good information too. And so, like I said, this isn't, you know, hard, set in concrete. Um, but it's good information and I just want to be able to share that with all of you. Now there's a few things that I don't have on this chart that are pretty common knowledge for most people. Um, for instance, if you have plants that have some sort of fruit, if there is a blossom that develops on that plant and that plant then develops into the thing that it is that you're trying to grow, whether it's peppers or squash or tomatoes or anything like that, then you need pollinators, you need bees, you need things like that. And so what better way to get the pollinators to notice your garden than to intersperse flowers among your vegetables and all of that, you know, by inviting the pollinators to come into your garden area is going to encourage them to pollinate your tomatoes, your peppers, your, your eggplant, and all of that. And so that is a type of companion planting that isn't necessarily on the list, but it still, it still falls under companion planting. Uh, something else that we learned in this class was about trap crops. Now, trap crops are, again, just what they sound like. Um, one of the things that they mentioned in this class was if you are growing squash or pumpkins or anything like that, that you often have a problem with squash beetles, squash bugs, blue hubbard squash 
seems to be the number one favorite delicacy of those terrible, horrible, wretched, garden-destroying pests. So what many farmers are now doing is they are actually planting uh, the blue Hubbard squash on the outside of their crops. And what happens is those squash beetles will be attracted to the blue Hubbard squash and then completely ignore the real crop. So basically they are going to sacrifice that blue Hubbard squash. They're going to trap the insects over here so that they leave the things that the farmers are wanting to grow, the pumpkins, the squash, and all of that, they'll leave those alone. And one of the things that they talked about was, you know, if you don't want to use any kind of pesticides on the food that you're growing, what some people will do is they will plant those trap crops over there, away from the other things, and then any pesticides that they do use, they use on those things that they weren't going to eat anyways, and they're trap plants, trap crops, and that way they'll spray that stuff and leave the rest of the garden alone. So now I don't use insecticides, pesticides, or whatever. Um, I do have some natural versions that I use. Um, I use neem oil, which is again a natural, safe for organic gardens, but I don't use any kind of chemical pesticide or anything like that. So, but just knowing that there's things like the blue Hubbard squash that you can plant and that just serve as a magnet to keep the squash beetles away from your precious butternut squash, you know, that's good information to have. It's a tool in your tool belt. So another example of companion planting, and I'm gonna mention a couple of the beneficial ones. Now my chart that I made doesn't have all of the reasons for um, why you would plant things together. Um, before I put this video online, I'm actually going to go in here and I'm going to add some of that information. I don't remember or I didn't take notes for all of these things and there's, there's a lot of it you guys. But the ones that are the most, um, the ones that stand out the most to me, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in this chart before I publish this. I'm going to put this online and you will be able to download this and print this. It's going to be completely free, of course. But before I put it up there, I'm going to add some of that information. For instance, um, a couple of the beneficial plants that go to, well together, like say corn. If you alternate a row of corn, a row of sunflowers, a row of corn, a row of sunflowers, that is beneficial. I mean, not only is it going to be beautiful because, you know, sunflowers are gorgeous. They're one of my favorite flowers and I plan on growing a lot of them this year. But so there's been studies that show when you have those alternating rows like that, there is a much lower risk of getting army worms that come in there and just destroy the corn. Um, I think they eat the silk off the tops of the, the little baby ears, if I remember correctly. So that's a great example of um, two plants working together. And while it may not benefit the sunflowers, it definitely benefits the corn. Another example is cucumbers. Um, some of the plants that do well planted alongside of cucumbers are things like beans, corn, peas, sunflowers, and here's, a, here's one of those that it's not exactly a trap plant, but it is a plant that you're just going to put there and you're just going to leave it. You're not going to harvest it. So when you create your mound and you plant your cucumbers, if you put a couple radishes in there as well, you don't harvest the radishes, you leave them, you just let them go to seed. You can collect the seeds if you want for, for next year. But the reason you do that is the radishes will actually protect the cucumber plant from cucumber beetles. And so that's just another beneficial um, symbiotic relationship, although the radishes don't really have any benefit from that. but. The cucumbers sure do. Now on the flip side of that, cucumbers don't do well when they're planted near very strongly aromatic herbs like basil and dill and things like that. They just don't do well together. Another thing that doesn't do well with cucumbers is potatoes. And it's not that the potatoes don't do well, it's the cucumbers have a much higher risk of a type of blight. So that's just one of those things that you want to know okay, I have cucumbers. I don't want to plant these anywhere near my potato patch. And oh, I've had cucumber beetles in the past. That's been an issue for me. Gee, if I plant some radishes in there, I'm not going to have that problem this year. 
or I hopefully won't have that problem this year. Another companion planting thing that I actually just heard yesterday for the first time was that planting daffodils around your fruit trees will discourage moles from coming in and damaging the roots of your fruit trees. So that's a little tidbit of information to to file away and remember because you know I have a baby orchard out here I've got all these little trees that I'm trying to get going and I know we've got moles and voles around here I've seen the evidence of them I've seen stumper and nubs with them um, and so now that I know daffodils is beneficial to my fruit trees I absolutely plan on planting daffodils all over around all those trees so again that's another tool in the tool belt a very well-known um, companion planting tidbit is the three sisters so the three sisters is a very old Native American tradition and it's where you plant corn first and you do it kind of in a circle and then once it gets to be about a half of a foot tall you come back in and you plant beans around each of those stalks and then about a week later you come back and you plant squash around all of that and those all work together so first of all the corn stalks come up and it provides the beans something to climb on the beans fix nitrogen in the soil which is vital to the corn corn is a high nitrogen requiring plant and so those work together and then when you come in and you plant the squash the squash does well because it appreciates the shade underneath the corn and everything. Squash doesn't need as much light as these other plants do. I planted butternut squash last year in between my corn. It went crazy. It was wonderful and I had very little weeds up underneath my corn even though you know and I've talked about in the past last year was very bad. I was sick. I couldn't do anything out there in the garden and yet that area did really well. I had a lot of butternut squash come out of that completely neglected garden. So the squash grows and spreads out all underneath the corn. It has plenty of room underneath there. And then additionally, the leaves of the squash plants shade the soil, which keeps down the weeds, and it also holds in the moisture. And so with those three things working together, it is just this like perfect little system of companion planting. So I just touched on a little bit of what companion planting is and like I said I'm gonna make this chart available on my blog cosmopolitancornbread.com. Uh, when this video goes live I will have the PDF um, located there where you can just click on the link and download it and I will put the link if you're watching this on YouTube there will be a link to that post down below in the show notes for this video and you can just find it there. So I hope you find this information helpful, maybe explains exactly what companion planting is a little bit, at least the uh, beginner version of it, and it can prompt you to look into it a little bit more. So that's it for today, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thanks for watching. My name is Constance. This is Cosmopolitan Cornbread. And until next time, love and blessings.